This is Rich Chiga. He's a Chinese rapper by way of Indonesia, and he's very popular on the internet. This is Joji. He's a Japanese-Australian singer, and he's also very popular on the internet. Plus, Joji invented the Harlem Shake meme. Let me say that again. This guy, Joji, in the blood bathtub, invented the Harlem Shake meme. But we'll come back to that. So Rich and Joji are both signed to 88 Rising, an entertainment company hoping to build a lasting global brand that will outlive singular moments of virality. They primarily create content combining Asian culture and hip hop, a formula that apparently pleases the internet gods greatly. They've only been around for 18 months, but they're already putting up major label numbers. I think that we have an unprecedented collective of talent, a group of like predominantly Asian artists, you know, really like making waves globally, which um, from an independent point of view as well. 88's founder, Sean Miyashiro, cut his teeth launching Vice's electronic music channel, Thump. But quickly, Sean became interested in life beyond dance music. I knew that after launching a whole content platform that I have kind of the ability and the know-how to, to, to do it again, but like for what was the question. So Sean moved to the Bronx to start over and figure it out. He couldn't afford an office space, so he worked out of his car at the top of a grimy parking garage. Everything kind of started here. If you look around, this is my environment. This is my, this is my serenity, really, really. 88 Rising was built here. Built on the grounds of uh, LA Fitness residence uh, in a parking garage. I was living in the Bronx. I'm just like, damn, where the hell do I go? So I just come up here and I like, you know, I just kind of figure things out every single day. Being like, okay, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> Coming here was kind of like my own kind of private office, basically. Like, to be honest, I would even go to the bathroom here. I would like take pisses here, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was, you know, it's was, it was just too far to go back down there. When I need Wi-Fi, I'd spend a good part of the day at Dunkin' Donuts. Hi, how are you? Can I get a, a chicken snack wrap? Before 88 Rising officially launched, Sean caught a surprise break in the form of a Twitter friendship with a funny 16-year-old kid from Indonesia named Brian, who taught himself English by watching Rubik's Cube tutorial videos on YouTube. Seriously, that's true. I thought his Twitter was genius from the future, just crazy. And like, just the shit that he was saying, like the memes he was making. But I didn't know that he rapped or anything like that. I really didn't, and uh, he came up with that stick like two weeks later. That stick was Brian's first ever attempt at making a rap song, and it immediately went viral. Everything was great about it. But the one thing that I noticed is the song was hard as hell. Just like everything about it, man. Just like, um, it was menacing, bro. Soon after the video dropped, Brian signed with 88 Rising. I'll FaceTime with Rich. Sorry for calling you Rich Shiga on my phone, Rich. He gets, I mean, Brian, he gets like super pissed off that he's saved in my phone as Rich Shiga. He's like, dude, am I not, am I not a human to you? What's good, bro? What's good, brother? How you doing? Oh, I took doing great. I did the sound check. Dude. How was it? It was tight. Hold a stick, So Brian could definitely rap, but some viewers understandably took offense at a Chinese kid satirizing rap cliches and calling himself Rich Chiga. But if a group of well-known rappers saw the video and genuinely liked it that could at least help validate Brian as a legit hip-hop artist. Plus, it could be really funny. It was just kind of an idea that kind of I, I just had on the spot. Everything that rappers say is better and funnier and smarter and wittier. You know, and it's just more entertaining. We just edit it as tight as possible, put it up, and uh, 
it really worked. Woo! Yo, this nigga got a pouch on and a Reebok pouch. This is the hardest nigga of all time. You said when you come for a chigga like me. <laughs> That was dope. Like, it's just lit, and I think people will take it as a people will take it as a joke at first. But it's like if he ran with that and kept doing more videos like that, it's just lit. You know, I I'd never been to America before, and like all of a sudden, just like I see like all the rappers that I listen to just like reacting to my stuff, and I was like, what? How did this happen? The reaction video also went viral, and even led to a remix of Dat Stick featuring Wu Tang's Ghostface. I'll get on that track. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> really? On the remix? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got him? Oh, you know him? And yeah, the remix went viral too. Brian has since acknowledged the misstep in his name and claims he may change it. But for the time being, he's still Rich Chiga to his fans. An ever growing global audience, hungry for more releases from emerging talent around the world. I didn't know that it was going to going to be this impactful and this important to people and I'm I'm very thankful and blessed that it has and every day now that you know I wake up it's it's like you know it's just like a new mission every day a major part of that mission involves Joji remember the bloody bath guy he's a former YouTube personality in the middle of a career transition the sound of, of this this song will he is it's like a trap song that you can like slow dance to Awkward prom shit, you know what I mean? I used to do crazy uh, episodic uh, internet videos. It was going well, and one day it was me. It was me and a, a few friends just in a room. We were we were casually chilling, and then someone plays the song, and it's it's brand new at the time. I happened to have a lot of costumes laying around, so I told the other guys, I was like, get in these costumes and let's just dance to it. Like, who cares? We were like, okay, let's let's just go crazy at the drop. So that video goes up. I go to sleep, and the next morning, everyone's doing it. Like next morning. That taught me a lot about the internet, how people want to just be a part of something, and from that point on something changed and I was a little better at understanding demographics and people and you know what they want to see and what they want to hear. I was friends with uh, a couple other artists who were affiliated with 88 and then I also started to realize that 88 is is the, the bridge uh, between Western and, and, and Asian entertainment and I really wanted to be a part of that. Joji just released the In Tongues EP, his first project as a serious artist. Joji's In Tongues record came out a couple weeks ago. Um, it's number two on Billboard on the R&B charts, which is crazy for you know independent release, and he's like a brand new artist. And the success is even more impressive, knowing he went from creating something like this. It's just Taco Bell. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> to creating something like this the newest music video for his song, Demons. Tonight, Rich Chiga has a show in New York City. Tickets sold out in an hour. I came here, I'm first on live. I, like, I, I was here at one. Yeah, yeah, I was the third person on live. So why'd you get here so early? Because I'm going to see Bruce Chiga. I want to get him. Him. I wanna touch him. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of Joji? He's oh my god! god. That's my dad, son. That's my dad, son. Did you guys cop the new EP? Or like yeah. yeah. I woke up at 6 in the morning just to pop my shit. And then I listened to it. And that shit started made me cry. <laughs> This is actually kind of exciting. Every time, this never gets old, like, you live online and social media, but like, there's nothing like just being with the people.
More often than not, viral success happens by accident. And then after an appearance on Ellen or Jimmy Kimmel, the creator's star power fizzles out. But Idiot Rising has figured out how to turn potential gimmicks into brands with an actual following that keeps coming back for the next thing. Oh, shit! <laughs> so keep an eye out for Idiot's next move. But more than likely, it won't be covered on network television or terrestrial radio. Although, as they've already proven, nowadays that really doesn't matter.